perspective. And now I give the floor to Mr. Lecoq. Thank you very much indeed. And let me just start by expressing my uh, deep personal thanks on behalf of the whole of the United Nations to High Representative Burrell, to Commissioner Lenarchich, and to the other um, commissioners and the staff of the European Services, the Commission, the EAS, again for um, co-hosting this event with us today and for excellent collaboration uh, and excellent preparation for um, today's event, but also, as the High Representative has just said, for all of the wider events, especially involving civil society that we put on um, for, the, for the Syrian people. This is the ninth of these major international conferences uh, that we've held. I've been to most of them myself, including for the last four years as a co-host with the United Nations. And it's a very shocking thing to have to tell you all that, in fact, the situation for Syrians in their own country and in neighboring countries is worse now than it's been at any time, really, over the previous nine years. As the High Representative said, there's less violence, but there's more suffering. And that is because of the economic consequences, primarily, um, that have been um, wrought on Syria. Um, there's an increase in the number of people who are in need of humanitarian assistance, and the scale and severity of their needs is also higher than it's ever been. And that's why we have the largest ever response plan put together by the United Nations and the organizations we work with for 2021. We're, we're seeking today to raise $10 billion, including $4.2 billion for help for Syrians inside their own country, and $5.8 billion um, for Syrians who've sought refuge in neighboring countries. We've increased the number of Syrians who we give help to every month in the last year because things have got worse. We're now reaching 7.7 .7 million Syrians inside the country every month, as well as all the help we give to refugees. But we can only do that if we continue to be supported by the international community. And I want particularly to pay tribute to the EU under the leadership of the High Representative and Commissioner Lenarchic for again um, playing such a prominent and generous role in the response, which we hugely value and greatly um, rely on. I spoke at the beginning of the conference today about the particular needs and rights of serious children. It's not just a humanitarian imperative to do a better job to provide support for serious children. It's also a strategic imperative. What do we think those children will be like as adults if they never go to school, if all they've known is a world of war, if all they see is suffering? What do we think they'll be like? It's in everybody's interest to provide more assistance for those children. Above all, what they need is peace. And so the process that my colleague Gare Pedersen runs the facilitation process under resolution passed by the Security Council of 2254 to try to promote a political resolution and some political progress fundamentally remains the most important thing to be done. And it's frustrating to us in the United Nations that it's proving so difficult to move that forward. We call on all parties to redouble their efforts and to understand and act on the fact that the only way out is through a peace process. Thank you. Thank you.